So I am Dr. Saurav Das, consultant endocrinologist and diabetologist at Marwari Hospitals and Apollo Clinics, Guwahati. So today I would like to talk about a recent article that has been published in Lancet 2025, which mentions the different subclasses of type 2 diabetes. So this uh, research on this has been going on for quite some time, led by people who have published the article, such as uh, Dr. Stymus and Dr. Vaikat Narayan et al. Now, coming to the crux of the article, what it mentions is that type 2 diabetes is not a homogeneous disease. It is composed of multiple pathophysiologic mechanisms, the two chief ones being uh, insulin resistance and insulin deficiency. So type 2A that they have said in type 2 diabetes mainly is concerned with the insulin resistance component, wherein you will find patients who are more obese, have more atherogenic profile and are at much higher risk of uh, complications such as nephropathy or cardiovascular disease. While similarly, insulin deficiency is seen in the subclass which they have labeled as type 2B. Now that is more commonly seen in Indians and we also see that Indians are more lean compared to the western population when we look at type 2 diabetes and this is due to the deficient insulin uh, production in our body. Similarly, a third class is where there's an overlap of both. There's both a type uh, insulin deficiency and both a insulin resistance. Now we have to understand that these classes are usually quite easily visible when we uh, classify it at the start of the disease. As the disease progresses, both the pathogenic uh, mechanisms are involved and after say five or even 10 years, you'll find both of them uh, as in insulin deficiency and insulin resistance in that same patient. And it would be difficult to subclassify around five to 10 years down the line. Ultimately, what this subclassification leads to is give us an, it gives us an idea of how to treat the patient. So for example, if a patient has features of insulin resistance initially, then we might consider oral hypoglycemic agents, including insulin sensitizers such as metformin, thiazolidinideons, and also GLP-1 receptor agonists that are the craze right now. While in patients who are insulin deficient, it is better to start with insulin and then maybe down the later down the line if they are getting controlled. And if we feel that the patient wants to shift to oral hypoglycemic agents, then we can consider shifting them to those while keeping them under follow. -up. So this is the crux of what has been published and uh, this would help physicians, diabetologists, endocrinologists to basically target the exact mechanism.